Good morning, welcome. It's Friday. Welcome to Kings at Home Daily this Friday morning. Welcome to my loft and um, uh, welcome from me golf. Do you know what? I think we just sing, need to sing today. We've not sung for a while, have we? It'd be good to sing a song. Um, just We're in the book of Hebrews. We've been, uh, the writer for Hebrews has been really uh, reassuring these quite new believers that Jesus is sufficient for them. He is enough for them and he's enough for you and I too. And and he's drawing the parallel with the Old Testament. These are probably uh, people with a Jewish background and the Old Testament where there were sacrifices and all those sort of things which all pointed to their fulfillment in the Lord Jesus. The high priest would go represent the people. You know, oh please would you represent me? Would you get a pardon for me? And he, once a year, a day of atonement and so on. Jesus has done it once and for all. And we saw that yesterday, we've seen that through the week. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful truths. And uh, we're here now this morning, chapter 9, and we're at verse 16. And as always, we'll pray. Lord Jesus, open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you more clearly. We want to love you more dearly. We want to value you more highly. You're a wonderful saviour. Please speak to us this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So here we are. We ended up with those lovely words. That you can't resist. Verse 14. How much more then with the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. There's the whole trinity involved in your salvation and mine. The Lord Jesus Christ, his blood, eternal spirit offered up to God to, give, to uh, cleanse our consciences. To, to, oh, what a wonderful thing. We've been made new. Um, I'm thinking back again to, to the Garden of Eden when, when at the, sh the shame that Adam felt and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't face God after his rebellion, you know, and uh, God was said, where are you? He had to hide his face. <laughs> no more shame. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us. Okay. Cleanse our conscience. So we're going to move on to some more imagery now to show us another part of what Jesus has done for us. It's verse, we, so we're now at verse 16. In the case of a will of Right, okay, so now we're talking about inheritance and something else that death uh, brings us into. Yes, we've talked about forgiveness. That's the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross for, brings forgiveness. But now we're going to see something else. It gives us an inheritance. In the case of a will, it's necessary to prove the death of the one who made the will. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because a will is in force only when someone has died. It never takes effect while the one who, is, who made it is living. This is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. A life has to be given, laid down before a, a will can come into being. When Moses had proclaimed every command of the law to all the people, he took the blood of the law to all the people, took the blood of, the, of calves together with water. It gets a bit technical now about the, the, the Levitical thing, laws and so on. Scarlet wool, branches of hyssop, sprinkled the scroll and the people. This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything in it, in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything to be cleansed with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Ah, there it is. Forgiveness. That's what it's all about. Being forgiven so we can enjoy the presence of the Lord again paradise regained beautiful it was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices so the tabernacle as we've said through this week the tent of meeting little kind of corner of heaven on earth god's presence coming close but not that close don't come too close and uh, that's what the tabernacle a tent of meeting was a little bit of a, a picture of the uh, of, of, of heaven the presence of the of the lord okay um the heavenly things themselves 
uh, sorry, but the heavenly things for themselves with better sacrifice than these. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself. Here we are. So it's the, he's the ultimate priest and he's entered into the, the, the ultimate holy of holies, the presence of God in heaven, the holy of holies, beyond our comprehension. Just to say, no, no, keep going, keep going. Okay. Um, nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with his blood that's not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all, for, 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 once for all, at the culmination of the ages, to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. We're living in significant days, the culmination of the ages. The new age has begun, the age to come has begun. Jesus has risen, the, the, the forerunner, the first fruits, and the, the kingdom is breaking out uh, across the earth. People are coming to know Jesus. The kingdom is, is among us, the, 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 the Bible says. So, um, okay, to do, do away with sin. Just as people are destined to die once and after that face judgment, well, that's the implication of when Jesus comes to, to bring in the kingdom, yes, it'll be a time for those whose sins are not forgiven and cleansed and pardoned. The day of reckoning, and we all know that, although we don't talk about it, it's, a, it's, it's right. You read things in the news at times and you think, geez, will justice be done? Will, these, will people get away with the, the horrible, awful things they do? There will be a day of reckoning, and that's what it's saying here when, when the kingdom comes in all its fullness. Christ, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. But I love that. The Bible speaks about us longing for his appearance. We don't think enough about that. I think it's, it's, it's such an important subject. Paul speaks about those who are, who are longing for his appearing. appearing. I, I hope you are. Now, I know it's slightly scary. It is. It is scary, but it's wonderful. This is our inheritance. Yes, we've been forgiven. The inheritance that we get from this, the, the will, as it were, is a hope and a future. We're going to be in the presence of the Lord. In fact, when we see him, we're going to be like him the bible says this is our inheritance and those who are waiting for him i hope you have got that sense of of, of anticipation as i say i'm sure it's a bit sort of oh, uh, oh it's going to be fairly or it'll be this it will be awesome truly you know people talk about a cup of coffee being awesome not appropriate use of the word awesome means or uh, uh, overwhelming on the knees and his coming will be like that, but, but with, with, with great love for those that he has won and saved, redeemed and made his own. I hope you do look forward to his appearing. So th this is our inheritance. We, the will, uh, it, it, and it's begun because the, Jesus died. So the, the, our inherit, the will, the, the inheritance is already, we're, we're getting bits of it. The Bible tells us we have the first fruits of the, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We've got a, uh, the first fruits of, of our redemption, the first fruits of, uh, of, of heaven, the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, a taster of what is to come. Folks, this is our inheritance. And we're going to sing a song because my time's nearly gone. And I think we'll do that one faithful. He's the all-sufficient one, the Lord Jesus. is the all-sufficient one. Faithful God, faithful God, all sufficient one, I worship you.
song. Chris Bowater sings it far better than I do. Go check it out. Faithful God, all sufficient one. Lord Jesus, thank you. This is true. Lord Jesus, you are all sufficient one. You're our saviour. You've won our redemption. You, you, you've forgiven us. You've redeemed us. You've paid a price. You, you've brought us close. You, you're, you're there, our great high priest, interceding for us. What a, oh, and you're going to bring us home one day. Lord Jesus, you are our all-sufficient one. And give us an ever-increasing vision of who you are and how amazing you are and warm our hearts with our devotion to you in jesus name go with us today may we please you and enjoy you today in jesus name amen god bless have a great day and hey see you on sunday i hope bye now <laughs>